So I've been a low-key Diablo massive fan for years. The video I did on Diablo 2 a few years ago took me over six months of production. I was first in line at the midnight launches for both Diablo 3 and Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls to grab my collector's editions of those games. And when Blizzard decided to bring Diablo 3 to consoles, man, I was on board. Now, in the ongoing debate of which version is better, I have to say for me personally, it doesn't really matter. They both feel very different and the same. There are specific benefits for those who play on PC and Mac, and for those who play on console. And at the end of the day, however you want to view it, we the gamers win. We get the ability to choose however platform that we want to be on. However, the more unique thing about Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls on consoles to me is the couch co-op experience. It feels very different than that of the PC version, and it lets you and friends locally jump in on the same TV, create characters, and have an awesome time while progressing through all kinds of madness that is Diablo. This past weekend, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls was updated to reflect that of Season 10. A new season, a new ladder, a new set of challenges that starts out relatively doable, but then quickly becomes a gigantic wall to climb. Diablo 3's post-game has evolved over the years, and the devs have taken a lot of efforts to ensure that the game continues on and on when you've reached the end of the story. Adding an adventure mode, a lot more difficulty settings via the torment difficulties, they've spent a lot of time to create some great endgame content. And as of this past weekend, they introduced seasons to the content console versions of the game for the first time. Seasons are a great way to get newcomers into the game, allowing you to team up with veterans for a fresh dungeon crawling experience. Think of it as an arcade mode in which the story isn't the focus, but rather the journey of power leveling and looting is an adventure in itself. And even though this is the first season coming to consoles, you're still going to get the same experiences whether you're playing on PC or on consoles, so no one side feels like they're missing out this time around. So somehow, Blizzard found out that I loved Diablo a lot, and they asked if I would like to take a deep dive into what lies in store for their newest seasons on console. This past weekend, I livestreamed myself starting completely fresh from level 1 to the Paragon levels, playing with you guys the fans at home, and I actually gave away 10 copies of the game for PS4 and Xbox One. So, the long and short of it, this video is sponsored and brought to you by Blizzard. The legacy of Diablo has redefined the dungeon crawler time in and time again. But for those of you who've been living under old Tristram's catacombs, you get the option to play as one of several classes of characters, male or female, in order to stop the demon of hell Diablo and his many, many, many diverse and scary as hell monsters from taking over not just Earth, but heaven as well. You and your friends are the last line of defense. But if that's not really your jam from a story perspective, don't worry, you can just jump right in with adventure mode. As I said earlier, this past weekend, I streamed Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls with all of you guys at home watching and playing along with me. I rolled a brand new Season 10 Barbarian and was joined by three awesome fans. Rerun was a monk, Incompetent Hero was a demon hunter, and Hugh Guren was a demon hunter as well. And leading the way was our team mascot, Musifer the demonic cow from Tristram. So my personal goal within these few days was to try my best to not only get to level 70 and start some Paragon leveling, but to knock out the first four chapters of the season 10 journey to acquire my seasonal class armor set. But the thing is, seasonal journey mode doesn't reflect the ranking of the ladder. So I'll also be taking a look at some of the seasonal challenges of the leaderboards for season 10. Within the first seven hours of play, I knocked out all of Act 1 and then switched over to Adventure Mode to start power leveling my way through the rifts and eventually start knocking out some of the Season 10 Journey chapters. Now, these first few chapters included things like leveling up your merchants, tackling the rifts to find some awesome gear and gems that would eventually lead to summoning the greater rifts. Now, these Season 10 Journey chapters are very simple and straightforward starting out. As you get further and further along in the chapter challenges, the tasks get longer and require more out of you. Within the three days of putting my hammers to stone, I cleared the first four chapters of the Season 10 journey, and with the full team, I was having a blast from start to finish. However, even getting to the end of Chapter 4 just to acquire the armor set was not an easy task. Things like soloing a level 20 greater rift or defeating Belial on Torment 4, while not too difficult, became quite the time sink. 
Now, I do want to point out that these challenges are somewhat minor, considering that these seasons are meant to be tackled over the course of a month or two and not days. To give you an idea, some of the final challenges in your seasonal journey will end up being something like beat a Greater Rift Torment level 30 in under 4 minutes or solo a Greater Rift level 70. For you completionists and masochists out there, I salute you. This literally is going to whoop my butt to the ground. The competition is real, and I challenge any one of you at home to give this a shot because, whoo, it is not for the faint of heart. Within the same Season 10 patch, Blizzard also introduced two changes for players to enjoy. The first one is the armory setup next to the stash. You can now quick save your equipment as a set in the event that you want to swap out your gear situationally. This is super cool for those moments where you want to bring out those unique armor sets you've worked so hard to set up. The other warranted addition in Season 10 is that crafting materials are no longer going to take up your space in your inventory. Now, there's well at least over 10 different crafting materials in Diablo 3, so this is a very welcomed change for the Diablo community and the item management that's going to be happening going forward. Let's talk about the seasonal challenges. Now, seasonal journey chapters are not the same thing as seasonal challenges. The journey is designed for you to earn a reward based on overcoming a whole bunch of challenges and obstacles that stand in your way. Whereas with the seasonal challenges, each challenge that you fulfill will award you with points. The more points you accumulate, the higher your ranking is on the Diablo 3 seasonal leaderboard. These challenges range from merely reaching level 70 to insane speedrun type challenges such as beat Axe 1 through 5 under an hour. Now, I want you to imagine right now trying to fight this guy right here, Belial, the Lord of Lies, with the condition that you have to defeat him without dying or getting hit by his projectiles or meteor attacks on this map. Holy crap. I'm not even sure if I myself could complete something this insane. What's even crazier is the fact that there's four categories for season challenges, so there's plenty of work for you to do. And keep in mind, some of the most difficult challenges require you to roll a hardcore character, which means that in hardcore mode, if your character dies, that's it. They're dead. They're not coming back. Oh man, I am so glad I'm not completing this game yet. So I want to add that between the seasonal journey and the seasonal challenges, the biggest gripe I have with the console version thus far is the fact that the UI is not optimized to display any of this information at all correctly. I had such a hard time figuring out the differences between the challenges and the journey simply based on the UI alone. Now this all sounds like common sense, right? Well, it may look simple, but you know it's an issue when you need to hit the more tab to reveal more things that you didn't know existed. There's simply too many menus regarding the seasonal stuff. You've got your season journey menu, then you have your season challenge menu with the four sub menus inside of that. You've got your leaderboards, which are then broken down by class, group size, and more. They're not the easiest to navigate through. Now this may be a small gripe, but it's a gripe that I have nonetheless. So overall, I'm super excited to really invest some more time with the console version of Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Personally, I love the PC version more, but after playing the console version for about 30 hours, I've learned to really appreciate the co-op function and the controller themselves. But with Season 10 being here and moving forward, there's so much content in here to keep you playing. And the seasons do change, meaning the challenges will evolve as they go forward. So what do you think? Are you going to start playing in this current season? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about the current season, check out the patch notes in the blog below. And hey, if you want to purchase Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls for either Xbox One, PS4, or PC, click the link in the description below. Once again, a huge thank you to Blizzard for being such an awesome company to work with and supporting our channel. That's it, that's all. I'll see you guys next time.